Hello, my name is Francis. I'm here to teach you a little bit about uh, one of the uh, poems that you'll be studying in our GCSE. What we're going to be looking at is some stuff to do with uh, school. In terms of school, how many people in your class? Have a think about who your favorite teacher is. Maybe think about what your favorite subject is. Think about what furniture there is. And finally, looking at that picture, do you think that's a modern picture or a picture from some time ago? Well, the plastic chairs and the Formica tables look as if it's quite modern, but those green chalkboards suggest it's from a while ago. Whether it's now or a while ago, you'll find that there are always going to be school rules. And I'm sure you will be able to see one of the school rules that are being broken here. Yeah, persons using mobile phone in the classroom. And for most schools where I've worked, using a phone in the classroom will have your phone taken off you and you get into some trouble. Rules vary, but in some schools I went to as a child, looking out of the window suggested you weren't concentrating on the lesson. And yet we were told to use our imaginations. This is one of the very old school desks that people used. You'd sit on one side and your friend would sit on the other. When you lifted up the lid, all your books would be down underneath and you'd get out your, your books for the next lesson, often used in primary schools where they didn't move around from class to class. I want to look at something slightly different now. Can anyone tell me what game these people are playing? One or two of you knew. It's actually poker. Poker is a card game. A lot of people gamble in this card game and make or lose a lot of money. And in your card game, you of course have your pack of cards and the person who uh, starts it all off, the person in charge, will shuffle the cards and then eventually they'll deal the cards. Card to each person, couple of cards to each person. And actually, the person who's got their cards, when they don't like the look of them, they will fold. They'll hand the cards back when they've finished, when they don't think they can win. So you've got three words there. You've got shuffling. You've got dealing. And you've got, when your cards aren't what you really want, then you can fold, you can hand them back. A lot of different cards around, some of them very easy to know the score. Other ones, what we call the picture cards. That one's your king, which is worth 13. But of course, we've got this one down here, which is the ace. Ace of spades. So let's go. First little exercise I want you to do, I want you to write about my school. Now, of course, if I was teaching this to you live, you could ask me lots of questions about my school to get some stuff down uh, to write about. But one of the things in the GCSE is to write non-fiction. That is something that actually happened. So writing about my school, you're gonna write a report about my secondary school. You need to ask me about my school and make notes so you can use the notes for your report. So when I'm talking now, you can sit there and make some notes on the kind of school that I went to in my school experience. And you could also think of some questions you'd ask me if we met. If I was your teacher today, teaching you online, what kind of questions would you ask me about my school? Well, here are the uh, bits of information I thought you'd be interested in in my school. My school was called Bishop Bright. It was, in today's terms, quite a small school. There are about 700 people there. I used to get to school by walking to school every day. It was about three miles. That's about four kilometers there and three miles back. And I would walk occasionally when I was very lucky. My mother would give me a lift to school. Sometimes I'd sneak onto the school bus and come home with people. But usually it was a walk, whatever the weather. My best friend was someone called uh, Dominic and another person called Roger. 
Uh, I got into trouble a few times, mainly for being late, either late for lessons or late for school. And I remember getting what's called a detention. Detention is where you're kept in after school or at lunchtime to do some work because of your, what you've done wrong. We actually didn't have a school uniform. We were allowed to wear our own clothes. And we'd start at nine and finish at half past three or four o'clock. It changed during the time I was there. I hated sport as a child. I really didn't enjoy it. And luckily the school didn't do very much sport. They had a number of sports fields. And the main rule was to respect your teachers and respect other people. Now, if you think of that rule we were just talking about, about using a mobile phone in class, that's showing disrespect to your teachers. So although it's a singular rule to respect your teachers, it covers a lot of things. Uh, we've talked about the number of people at the school. My favorite subject was English and later on computers. Uh, really didn't like sport. Other subjects I could get on with mainly. And my favorite teacher was one of our English teachers. She was great and she taught drama as well. So the poet that we're going to be talking about today and the poem that we're going to look at today is someone called Carol Ann Duffy. I saw her reading her poems some time ago. Uh, wonderful poet. She uh, is now in her 60s. Uh, she's over 60 years old. She was the poet laureate in England. The Queen or the government chooses a, a poet to be the poet laureate, the main poet in England. And she was one of the first ones who actually came from Scotland. She's gay. She's a professor of poetry at university. And she was born in a very poor part of Glasgow. Glasgow is the second biggest city, I think, in Scotland. Anyway, here's the poem that we can read together. The big trees outside are into their poker game again, shuffling and dealing, turning, folding their leaves, drifting down to the lawn, floating away, ace high on a breeze. You died yesterday. When I heard the hour, home time, last bell, late afternoon, I closed my eyes. English, of course. Three decades back and me 13. You sat on your desk, swinging your legs, reading a poem by Yeats to bored girls. Except my heart stumbled and blushed as it fell in love with the words. And I saw the tree in the scratched old desk beneath my hands, heard the bird in the oak outside scribble itself on the air. We were truly there, present, miss, or later the smoke from your black cigarette braided itself with lines of Keats. Teaching is endless love. The poems by heart, spells, the lists lovely on the learning tongue, the lessons just as you said for life. Under the gambling tree, the gold light thins and burns the edge of the page of the book, precious, waiting to be turned. So let's look at that in a little more detail. I just need to pull up another document over here to uh, pick up what we were talking about. Right, the big trees outside are into their poker game. Big trees outside. There could be inferred an element of rule breaking here, looking outside rather than concentrating on the teacher. But this is English. This is where we should use our imagination. The fact that the trees are into their po poker game is an example of personification. And there's a lovely use of imagery here of rather than just dropping their leaves, or dropping their leaves, we're possibly talking about the autumn of the year now, they're actually shuffling. Do you remember shuffling with your cards? Shuffling is where you sort out your cards in the right order. Dealing is where the cards are sent out to each person. Turning, we forgot about turning earlier, when you've got your cards on the desk like that, and you want to see what they are, you turn them to have a look at them yourself. You never show anyone else your cards. It's secret what your cards are. But folding is where you hand your cards back. 
And then, of course, we've got the reality. Their leaves are drifting down to the lawn. It's the end of the year. It's something passing. And their floating away, drifting and floating, suggests quite a laid back, timeless element to the poem. There's no speed, there's no urgency. It's the time of your youth where you'll always be young. You'll always feel young. Ace high, it's something very positive. And then it's juxtapositioned with you died yesterday. There's a big contrast between the positive nature of Ace High and you died yesterday. And when reading it, one's voice can reflect that contrast. Of course, thinking back to childhood, thinking of the teacher, the hour when I heard about the death was home time. It's the time most people look forward to in school, possibly teachers as well. It's the end of the day. It's the time when we can go home and relax a little. I closed my eyes. I closed my eyes. We were always taught to do in school to close our eyes and imagine. But we also close our eyes when we're emotional. We also close our eyes when we try not to cry. And of course it was English and the suggestion is that she was English teacher. She taught us poetry. How long is a decade? That's right, 10 years. So it's three decades back and me age 13, that means Caroline Duffy was 43 when this happens. And one of the rules possibly at school was you're not allowed to sit on your desk, sit on a chair. Many times as a teacher, I've gone up to a child and said, don't sit on the desk in the canteen. People have to eat in there. Don't sit on the desk in the classroom, sit on your chair. But of course the teacher was sitting on the desk. She had the authority, she had the confidence to sit on the desk. And then maybe there's an element of seeing her as something more than just a teacher. She's swinging her legs on a hot autumn day, possibly bare legs. And she's reading a poem by Yeats. Right, just thinking about Yeats, we're talking about someone who wrote some time ago. And uh, but most of the classroom are not interested in what the teacher is saying. You're teaching it to bored girls. Is this a suggestion it was a girls' school? Is this a suggestion that you didn't have the possible distraction for some of boys? And the girls were bored. But except for one, except Carol Ann Duffy, the poet, my heart stumbled and blushed. Now, this could be inferred two ways. Either it could be my heart stumbled and blushed because I was interested, I was held in thrall of this wonderful teacher and this gorgeous poem, or it could also be taken to mean my heart stumbled and blushed because I, I had a little crush on the teacher. I thought she was wonderful. And then we introduced the word fall in love. I fell in love. Fell in love with the words. Would that be the words of the poem? Or would that be the words spoken by the teacher? Would that be the words fell in love? And I saw the tree in the scratched oak desk. Of course, the desk is made of wood and the tree, when uh, cut down, will possibly be turned into planks. But it's more than that. I saw the tree in the scratched old desk under my hands. There's something tactile about it. Tactile is a word we use when it means when you touch something and you feel it. So this card, this card is soft. This card is shiny. This card is slightly cold under my fingers. Tactile. Now, on the old oak desk, of course, there's the possibility of writing. These people who write on desks and walls, some would call it graffiti, some would call it vandalism. But she uses a brilliant metaphor here and heard the bird in the oak, the tree outside, scribble itself on the air. The actual graffiti of sound in her grief at hearing about her wonderful teacher's death, she becomes very aware of all of her senses. And then there's a lovely uh, 
metaphor really we were truly there that of course means we were there we were physically in the class but then she relates it to present and in england i'm not sure how it is in your country in england when the registered is taken at the beginning of the day or beginning of the lesson many children will reply present so i call your name fred present sir Present is also a gift, gift that was presented by Miss, the teacher, to the board girls, except Carol accepted it with great glee. Of course, she's unmarried. She's a young teacher. And then later, would this be in sick form when we become aware that our teachers aren't just uh, ogres or demagogues, they're not wonderful or nasty in, uh entirety but they're actually humans and the realization that the teachers smoke black cigarettes very elegant at that time to have black cigarettes braided itself with lines from keats one of the great romantic poets and then we get another use of the word love teaching is endless love there is no let up day after day week after week you're trying as a teacher, and I know this from 30 years experience, to do your best for your students. And there's this line, which is an interesting one, the poems by heart, learning something by heart, learning it uh, totally so you can speak it, you can quote it without looking at the words. Spells, is this a reference to spelling in English? Or is this a reference to the magic of the moment? The Harry Potter spell, that there was a spell put over Carol Ann Duffy that 30 years later she can remember it so intently. Then we get a lovely example of alliteration. Lots of the use of L in there. But there's also another wonderful uh, admission here. The list lovely on the learning tongue. Learning it by heart, poetry is like music. Poetry should be spoken, poetry should be heard. Actually, a poem on the page is like music written on a piece of paper. It doesn't have the same power it has to our ear. And you said the lessons were for life and many of the board girls didn't believe you. But actually I did, and I realize now the lessons for life because Carol Ann Duff, Duffy's life was poetry, is poetry. She was the poet laureate. She's a professional poet. She's a professional professor of poetry. But actually for the rest of us, we have a chance of lessons for life from poetry. And then she returns, Carol Ann Duffy returns to the beginning of the poem. And she talks about the gambling trees again, the personification of the trees. But now of course, it's the end of the day. It's not just autumn, it's the end of the day. The light goes thin, it's sunset. And the edge of the book, precious, waiting to be turned. Things go on. Miss may have died, but things go on. Miss has given us, wherever it was up here, Miss has given us a present. And we've taken that present, we use that in our life. Now, I've given you a lot of information on the poem. What I'd like you to do is to go and write me a little essay about the poem. And here's your title. What does Carol Ann Duffy say about her teacher in the poem, Death of a Teacher? Back up your observations with the quotations from the text. You'll find a Word document with the poem and my notes on malvintutor4.me, a uh, little website where you can learn more about the tutoring that I do and you can get more information about the poem. Thank you for your time. I've enjoyed talking to you. Goodbye now.